Hey everybody, come on in to the CPTSD podcast. We're going to dip our toe into toxic shame again, because who can't get enough of that, right? We need to talk about it. We're also going to be talking about self-abandonment, your vicious inner critic, and social anxiety, and why those are part of the top five things that hurt about CPTSD. Come on in. Welcome back, everybody, to Season 4, Episode 5 of the CPTSD Podcast. I'm Tabitha Birdweaver, your host and a licensed therapist who is here trying to help people with CPTSD figure out what to do next. So the bottom line is this is Part 2 of um, the top five things that hurt when you have CPTSD. These are things that hurt us, but also hurt other people sometimes. We've got to go back and talk a little bit more about toxic shame. Um, But before we dig into that, head on over and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to know why these um, issues that we're going to be talking about today can be really served and healed through your chakra system, go join the Karmic Alchemy community at TabithaBirdWeaver.com. We talk more about that kind of stuff there. Okay, so why have shame at all? right? Like, what's the difference between shame and toxic shame? And is shame ever good? I don't, nobody likes shame, right? The only person who likes shame is somebody who knows how to wield it to harm you. And so shame is one of those uncomfortable emotions like guilt or disgust that we've developed as a species to help keep us safe as a unit, not necessarily as an individual. So I just wanted to let you know that while we're never comfortable with shame, it actually does have a purpose. And this purpose is exactly why the spiritual wound of toxic shame hurts so much. The purpose of shame, there's several ideas about why why we develop shame, but one that really resonates with what we're talking about right now is that shame was developed through our species to maintain social order and hierarchy. Right. And so it keeps things organized because, you know, when you've stepped outside of your role. Okay, so if you're part of a kingdom and you are a peasant who is acting like the king, there's going to be a problem there. And the inverse of that is true, too. Right. Kings can't go around acting like peasants. And so I'm just giving a dramatic example of how understanding the social role is important to social organization. I don't necessarily think we need kings, so don't come at me for that. All right. The point here is social order is important to our survival. And shame is one way we know if we're kind of messing up the social order. So shame light is embarrassment, right? Like you've stuck, you said the wrong thing and we're rude to somebody and that disrupts the social order. Even if it was an accident, you know, or maybe you overstepped your bounds at work and you didn't realize that there was a hierarchy and a way that you had to get things done that went through a chain of command instead of just you. Those are just examples of of embarrassment that is meant to keep the social order. So what makes toxicity um, possible with shame? I think one of the things that is most painful about toxic shame is that our role was weaponized against us. Our, Our being was weaponized against us. And what I'm saying there is shame is meant when it's toxic the message that we're being given is you don't measure up no matter what we're measuring you don't make the cut you can't be part of the group you're an outsider and we're abandoned and betrayed in that moment by a caregiver who is supposed to be including us and teaching us how to be in social relationship. But instead, we're told we're not welcome in social relationship at all. And when we try, it's just ridiculous. Right? That's the message. Don't even try. You're never going to get it right. And so we build up a lot of personality traits from this nervous system habits and traits from this kind of 
turning the value of the self against us, especially I'm talking about especially in childhood, although this is a component of all abuse because it's a power dynamic. The parent is the person or the caregiver is the person who decides what's acceptable, what's lovable, what's worthy or not. And you're told you're not measuring up in a way that is meant to control you. And I believe in narcissistic situations or abusive situations, systematically murder your soul. I can't believe I'm saying that with a smile, but it, it is meant to murder your soul and make you a shell because then you're usable and you're an extension of the person that is treating you like this. So toxic shame is a perversion, right? Of something that is meant to be an actually grounding, like you know what your role is in society. You know what your role is in the family and when that role is honored and celebrated, then it feels great to be in that role. But our role and our relationship with others is twisted through toxic shame. And so where we end up going with that is immediately into self-abandonment. When you have CPTSD, we abandon ourselves just like our caregivers did, right? Just like they did. If there's a problem, it must be me. And, and I'm not competent or capable, so I can't even find a solution to me as a problem. It's a no-win situation, and that is exactly the dynamic that is intended. So when we abandon ourselves repeatedly, we then feel like other people are abandoning us. And we can do a whole series on boundaries, you know, uh, at, I will do a whole series on boundaries. But anyway, that self-abandonment, that giving up of our needs so that we can be okay in a situation or an environment or a relationship dominates the way we have relational experiences. And so sometimes we will expect to be in the midst of toxic shame in a different relationship and it's not there because they're not our caregivers, our parents, it's a different person. Right. So the toxic shaming might not be there, but we still feel it because it is so ingrained in us. And because one of the side effects of toxic shame, self-abandonment, and the second side effect of toxic shame is really where <clears throat> we become perfectionists and we have a critic inside of us that is rough, really rough and always on. And the reason we've developed that is because we weren't safe. We had to analyze every single situation to find the path through where we would be least harmed. I mean, talk about fight or flight right there, right? But we're developing this internal judge, not only on decision making, but on value. And I just want to use a word here that <clears throat> is a clinical word. Um, but it's, I think you might read about it. And so we develop introjects. And so here's a key tip that I just wanted to point out for you. When you notice that you are doubting your decision, can't make a decision, feeling worthless, feeling stupid, feeling small, whatever those negative experiences that you have are, when you're in that spot and you can pause and number one, notice that you're in that spot and just be like, oh, like that's it just recognize it and that will change your perspective and uh, just a little and the little is all you need right recognize that you're doing that and then listen to what that voice is saying to you feel the quality feel the felt sense that you had that we talked about in um season four episode gosh what th i don't know three like this experience of feeling small or feeling on fire <laughs> Or feeling huge whatever your experience is tune into that and notice who does that sound like right who put that in you because all the stuff that's in you you've learned that's how humans are we learn 
So you either learned it from your caregivers when you were really little, or you've learned it on your own over your lifetime, but it's all learned, and which is beautiful because that means you can unlearn and relearn something else. So recognize it's happening and then listen or pay attention to where do you think that came from? Because you might start to notice a pattern that whenever you feel, I'll, I'll just use myself as an example, whenever I feel small or stupid, it's because the relationship I had with a, par a parent where I had to have the right answer the first time. And there was zero tolerance to me being slow or not having the correct information. Whether, it, whether I should or not, that's irrelevant, right? But making somebody wait while I figure it out, get that tone. So here's an example from my awakenings, one of, one of the billions of things that have happened. One day I was really frustrated with my son. Like too much, too much frustration. for He was just being a kid, normal. And I really wanted to make a point to him. And oh my gosh, I remember my dad's finger came out of my hand and I pointed exactly the way I used to get pointed at. I say used to, but that actually I got pointed at when my dad's surprise visit did me just a few months ago. I was like thinking about that for a sec. Sorry for the pause there. He's still pointing that finger at me. And I saw it. I saw my hand do the point, And then I saw his finger, including the mole that's right there on his hand, right? It's his finger came out of my being. And I went, mm-mm. Nope. We're not doing that. And so immediately... I apologize for my tone to my kid because I don't even remember if I had a tone, but I'm guessing because the finger was there, I had a tone of impatience or like, you know, hurry up. So pay attention to where you think that came from. And that vicious inner critic, the last thing I want to say about that for us today is it is shocking to me still that people in general without CPTSD, people do not talk to themselves the way we do. Can they be critical of themselves sometimes? Of course, that's a human trait. But 24-7 and mean, they don't do that. Not all the time like we do. And so what I'm trying to convey to you there is that that is programming because that is not a predisposed state of humanity, right? People that got adequate nurture and care do not have to berate themselves so that they stay safe. And they have a different understanding, going back to that role, of, of their relationship. You see, it's crazy. They're nuts. They think that they're equal with other people. They think that they're worth that. Okay, I'm totally being sarcastic. I hope you can pick that up. But it is foreign to think that people have not had to attack themselves over time to feel like they're safe. Imagine if you could just stop doing that like 20%, three times less a day. Your nervous system would shift. So when we're talking about toxic shame, it is the gift that keeps on giving. And I really hope that you can start to understand that we're not going to get away from feeling embarrassed because that's part of humanity, but it doesn't mean that you are worthless. If you want to know more about how this information <clears throat> translates to work you can do with your chakras or awareness, awarenesses you can do with your chakras, especially your first four chakras, right? Come on over to the Karmic Alchemy community because there are some interventions I would love to share with you over there. Please go ahead and think about subscribing to our YouTube channel. I frequently have links and, you know, images on the screen that can support your learning if you want to do that. Most importantly, I wanted to let you know that we are going to be doing a challenge. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about chakras, it is called Reboot Your Base Chakra. We're going to give you some free gifts to begin with. Of course, there's a, like a chakra health checklist, and this is from Chakra Dance. It's beautiful and well-made. 
help you tune into your being and see which of your chakras might need a little more love than the others and a little more um, healing right now. And then there are some meditations that you can use to get you down the road. So if nothing else, please do go ahead and get those downloads. You deserve that support. But if you want to dig in deeper, we're going to do a 10 day class um, online where you can have different experiences in the privacy of your own home and then come into our forum and talk about them. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about social anxiety and why toxic shame is going to keep that locked into place. And so intervening on the shame portion might actually help you with the anxiety piece. So tune in for that. And uh, until then, take it easy and keep it light.